Hello people, um, well you're probably here because of this, um, well before you proceed actually look at those um, because these will fix your problem potentially too. Um, actually now while editing I guess I looked at this and noticed that it does say what I am doing right here in the comments but I just want to say this so whoever watches this and already tried that doesn't skip. Um, my my workaround still does work because i believe the difference is that um you are need to configure the aco for all offline settings um and then boot and in this process i already i will repeat this at the end of the video once again so you understand clearly um and then boot right after configuring them correctly and not because the moment like if you configure them incorrectly which can easily happen because it's like one in a billionth chance that you do it correctly without knowing how to do it correctly, which I will explain in the video. Um, if you do it incorrectly and then boot, um, and and you know boot in incorrect state, then the ASU driver is kind of corrupt, and you have to reinstall it in order to get it to work again. If you have went through all of this and you are still a lone survivor trying to fix your problem, well then um, let me help you. I read through this because I'm crazy, um, but I found the way found a way I believe so first thing you do hello windows um <laughs> first thing you do is you open up FL Studio um and FL Studio yo yo and you select none here right instead of this bringing us this message of love um <laughs> select none just so next time you set it up it's not there that's kind of necessary to proceed so then <clears throat> you I don't know what's going on here dude wow I don't have OCD um, you have to uninstall, right? So you have to uninstall, it's, uh, how's it called? ACO for all, right? How does the application here called BCO uninstaller? Um, well, it's not necessary. You can also, BCO uninstall, whoop, uninstall, yeah. Uh, you can also just use a normal, you know, like I think the normal Windows installation will do too. I use this, so what the hell did I just install? Hello. I just, uh use this and it worked with me for with this so i recommend using walker on solid 2. it's also useful for the rest of your life because it you know deletes auxiliary files like side files i'll show you in a minute anyway so uninstall as you for all um whatever way you you normally would the cool thing as you can see creates a resource point this is not an ad for bcu but <laughs> it's quite a useful application um <clears throat> and then you know create it normal installation and solid Bye, and it looks for leftovers. Whatever, this is not really the point here. Um, you know, to find some, you can delete those too. Whatever. Now that is off your system. That's all you need to do. You can close this now. Um, then you install a new version of Azure for All, right? Or just new download, new instance. The version doesn't matter. A lot of people said that this one only worked, but whatever, it doesn't matter. This one, at least, this one works for me too. As I said, only works for two percent of people. So download that. Um. And then, what is this? Cool. Now, um, now it's kind of you know a necessary step to take is the following: do this, the normal, the average, the generic. But now this is freaking necessary. If you don't take this, you're not going to get anywhere. You need this offline settings application, you know, kind of child application. The rest is obvious. Now, after installation, you can get the setup file and delete this weird thing that you want. Um, we have that right offline settings some people say they don't find it here um don't find it here here it actually never is i don't know why why it would be there um just look at you know offline you know look at look at it here you could also use i can make another ad for this application which <laughs> helps you find files which is pretty cool um but you know you could also just go here and look for you know offline settings there um so yeah, after finding this that's kind of the, the, the thing you have to do and you have to be very careful. So um, this is the, this is kind of the child application that helps you um, helps you manage the settings of the SU for all audio driver audio interface without having the DAW open, right? So that means you can set the settings and then open the DAW and make the DAW launch SU for all in the right state kind of. This is necessary because because if you don't do that, um, if you don't set the right settings before opening um, FLS, it will not be able to access Azure for all at all. So you need to set the settings before opening. And that's what I'm saying. It's necessary that you don't open FLS now, right? 
after deleting, you delete, you delete as you for all, and then you install it and set it up. In between that time, don't open FLS. I think that's a weird ass bug. I tried it and yeah, just don't. So um, having this new version installed, you first of all press this button, restore default settings, um, which takes a second. It's already default settings mostly, but this is just you know for safety. And then you select one device. These are all the devices, right? These are speakers, also stereo. These are my AirPods. This is a headphone. Um, this is a mic. And and Realtek R, I guess, is you know the default Windows um, audio driver. I guess this is only for Windows users. Mac users, sorry, I cannot help. Um, or barely. Maybe you know which your which default audio interface your computer has. Anyways, um, so you select this. You just press on this on button. It takes a second. Don't get confused by the delay. You just select this. Don't press this weird button. It makes everything complicated. I don't even know half half what this says. Kind of do, but also not. Um, so just select the. I think Realtek R will do it for most people. Um, yes. Nothing else, right? Relax, bro. Relax. <laughs> later, right? Everything else, like what mics you want or whatever, do that later. First of all, just take your output input device, whatever child objects this are. You will be able to configure. You will be able to configure this later. So having this done, it should look like that, right? Everything else gray. Close. Now you open your FLS and voila, there is no ugly ass splash screen. Well, that's because we did this, right? And now if you press this, that, I mean, boots, it works. You have, have probably not seen this for ages and now you're in high feelings of, of ecstasy. But here you go. Um, what you do now is, you know, a kind of obvious, you can do whatever. I would just try not to mess up um, the following. If you turn off your real tech and turn off something that doesn't work, for example, I doubt the how risk to just some driver have, um, you could fuck up the software. Like if I would close it now, if I would be closing it now, you would not be able to find it again because it's in a broken state, right? So you need to kind of always have applications enabled. Um, it has some workarounds that kind of automatically prevent you from doing this, but I would just always make sure that you have some devices enabled that, you know, send or don't send. Interestingly, it's broken now already, you see. Like, I kind of need to press this button a couple times to, to update the UI. It's really shitty UI, it's really sincerely ass. But yeah, so I guess press this button a couple times to update it, because if you turn it off and then turn it on again, it doesn't do anything, weirdly, fucking no. Um, so yeah, um, and then the setup is as usual, I think you should know that. You know, here you have your microphone, you can turn it on. Again, it takes a minute, or you have to press this button twice, who fucking knows why. Disable the output, I guess. I'm literally toggling this as if it's everything. Um, <laughs> probably a bit. <laughs> Anyways, but you know, you set up your audio interface and that should work. I'll test it in a second. Um, well, you won't hear it because it's fucking quiet. Here you go, right? Ah, that sounds like shit. Well, I'm not going to explain this. This is not why I'm here. Um, buffer size. The input device is actually necessary for now. Yeah, this should do. There you go, right. Um, by the way, actually, I do want to say this. Um, the buffer size, of course, as small as, as possible is good because you want a little delay, I guess, that's why you're here, actually. Um, if this works for you, if if 26, I think, MS this is, works for you, great. You'll still have a little delay. The real delay, by the way, is not this. The real delay, delay is, is there because this includes all the plugins and you know DAW specific applications that still process the audio signal. So, what I would recommend doing is, if your interface has that, Realtek R has this inbuilt. Uh, no, I have no clue what this interface looks like, but um, you have this slider here, which is, which is I don't know inbuilt buffer offset. Fuck no, what it is? I'm not a technician, but essentially you can use this to, to tweak the delay. Um, you will hear that. A certain uh, delay will not work because everything does, so keep it to zero. But yeah, so this is necessary. This is necessary. Fuck that. Don't press this. Don't press this. Don't press this. And the sample rate should now be kind of dynamic. So, you know, both work. Um, kind of showing how this message actually is complete, kind of arbitrary. It doesn't tell you anything because about because the message, you know, of like sample rate doesn't work doesn't do so yeah essentially the process is delete everything <laughs> reinstall it and set the right settings before booting i hope this helped um you can send shit in comments if you have comments if you have questions about you know whatever um not doing what you want i don't know i'm not a wizard but i can do my very best Woohoo.